Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will explore how to create general journal entries in SAP s using Fiori. Therefore, we navigate to the application called Post General Journal Entries. Select this application over here. And just some remark, if you can't see this application, then this is because the necessary Fiori user roles are not assigned to your user. So you can check this via this button over here. Go to About. Over here you can see the app ID, F0718. And then you can insert this app ID in the Fiori Reference Apps Library. I will leave you a link in the description of this video. There you can see the roles that you need to assign to your user to use this application. Okay. Over here you can see we have different sections. The header section, attachments, notes and balances. Let's start with the header section. So the header section is this area over here. First of all, we need to insert a journal entry date. So the journal entry date is the date of the data entry. So let me just copy the date from the posting date. Then we have the posting date. So this is extremely important because on this date, the financial data is really posted into the system. We could insert a period and then you can see here the journal entry type. You know that the journal entry type stores lots of parameters, amongst others, the number that will be issued by the system when we post this journal entry. I have another video explaining this in detail. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. Then you can see over here the company code and also the transaction currency. Both are mandatory. Then we could even insert a ledger group. By inserting this ledger group, we could state that we want this journal entry to be posted to one or multiple ledgers, but not all ledgers in our system. I also have a video explaining the ledger group and the ledger concept. I will leave you the link in the description of this one. For now, we will leave it blank. This means that this journal entry will be posted in all the ledgers existing in our system. We could insert a reference. This is a free text field. And then over here, you can see that we could insert here transaction number if this journal entry is part of an intercompany transaction. I will explain you this in another video because this is quite complex. We have the partner business area. This is also not mandatory, a header text, an exchange rate, and also a translation date. Okay, so far for the header data, then you can see here the line items. So a credit and a debit side. We will start with a debit side. Here we insert our general ledger account. Let's just insert bank and say we have a debit of 1000. And then for the other side, we'll just say a cash account, petty cash and a credit of 1000. So we are just transferring cash between our bank and our petty cash. As you can see, over here, there are some arrows. So I could click on this one and then I could fill lots of more information if needed. So amongst others, I could fill an item text and assignment as well as the value date, which is important for bank accounts. We can insert house bank information and also over here, different account assignments like a cost center, profit center, or even a segment. This also counts for the other company code, as you can see over here. Also, we could click here on the plus symbol to even add more lines if we have a complex financial transaction. We could delete an item if necessary. And here we can always check whether a line item is already complete or not. If it's complete, then you can see a green rectangle. So far, so good. Also, you can see here we could assign a profitability segment if needed. But this only counts if we would include a profit and loss account in our journal entry. Good. Let's now collapse the view here and here again. So far, we talked about the header data and the line items. Now you can see over here, if we have text relevant postings, then we could even insert your text information and also hit the indicator calculate text, which is always the best practice so that the system derives the text automatically. Furthermore, you can see here, we could also select a template. Let's click on this one. With that, we could select here one of our already created templates and then lots of information will already be pre-filled. I will show you how to create such templates in the second part of this video. So keep on watching. Okay, let's click on cancel for now. Also, you can see upload new entry. This would create a new journal entry. But as we did not post this one yet, I will leave it for now. We can also hold a journal entry. So if we are holding a journal entry, then we can come back later, adjust information and then post. So let's say that we were in the middle of creating this journal entry, but then we were distracted. So we can hold the entry and come back later to finish it. Okay, we can always click on simulate. Let's do this. Now you can see an overview about how the journal entry looks like. 
and what we will post to the system, including the header information and also the line items. And also you can click here on the GL account if necessary to display more information for this GL account. Okay, so far so good. Now we can click on post and we can see the journal entry 100 million was saved successfully. Now from that view, as you can see, we could still edit the journal entry. We can also create a correspondence or reverse the journal entry. We can create a new journal entry and also display changes or select the currency. Let's actually inspect the reversal over here. We can insert a reversal reason, so wrong posting for instance. Then we select the posting date of the reversal and the text reporting date and then we can click on OK. And now you can see here that our document was reversed by another document. We can even click on this one to inspect the reversal document as you can see over here. Okay. And last but not least, you can also always display the journal entries, not in a detailed view, but let's go back here and back again. And let's navigate to manage journal entries. This app over here. And if we here search for our current date, then you can also see the two documents that we inspected already. Now it's time for the second part of this video, where we inspect the application to manage journal entry templates. Therefore, we go back to the SAP landing page and to manage general journal entry templates, we navigate to the application called Manage Journal Entry Templates. This one over here, select this application and now you are forwarded to this screen over here. So in the upper section, you can search for already existing journal entry templates. And then down here, all of the templates already created are being displayed. But for now, we will create a new template from scratch. Therefore, we click on create and here you can see an information message. You can't change the selection after you have chosen an app from the list. So actually we can create this journal entry template both for the posting of journal entries and also for the posting of journal entries with the auto reverse function. For now, we will select the upper one. Click on create and now you can see a different steps that we need to go through up until we can save our journal entry template. First of all, we need to provide some general information. So at least a template ID, let's just call it Z test two, then a description. Here we have maximum of 30 characters. Let's just say journal entry template with CO account assignment. And then we have here the access level. This is quite important. As you can see, there are three different access levels, group level, company code level, and user level. Group level means that this template can later on be accessed by all of our employees, independent of what company code they are working in. Company code level would mean that if we choose this indicator, only people with access to the company code we will define later on will have access to this particular journal entry template. And user level would be that this journal entry template is only created for our user and not for any other user. Let's for now select group level so that everyone can access. Also, you can see here share publicly. This means that if I hit this indicator, then other people can also access this journal entry template. This is only possible if I select group level or company code level. It won't be possible if I select the user level because user level is just for our user. Okay, I will say share publicly then click on step two. Here we now come to the journal entry header fields. So here we can select the fields and you can see some of the fields are grayed out because they always will be displayed as they are also mandatory to fill. However, we can also say for instance that here the posting period is read only as well as that for instance a ledger group, intercompany transaction and so on should only be read only. So far so good, let's click on step three. Now we can store some default values for our journal entry header fields. For instance, the journal entry type, let's say SA, the company code, we can also say 1010 here and our currency will always be Euro. And then that's it for now. On the next step, we can now select the journal entry line item fields. So not the header data, but the line item data. Let's click on step four. And over here, we can see different sections, company code, we will say mandatory. And then the other sections, we first of all need to select them so that they are being displayed. So I will say text, then I will say assignment, text code. And if I do not set them either to mandatory or read only, they will always be optional. 
So we could fill them, but we do not need to fill them. Let's scroll down a bit. Let's also say reference keys over here. And let's say in the account assignment, I am interested in cost center, order, profit center and WBS element. And that's basically it. Then for now, this is fine. We can click on values for journal entry line item fields. This would be the fifth and last step. And here you can now see the fields that we selected before. So those fields, we will be able to fill them later on when we post our journal entry. Let's just say at least I select here a cost center and that's basically it. Now we can click on review. Now we can see the journal entry template information. We can edit it if necessary. Also, we can check it to see if there are any errors. No errors found, so this is fine. Okay, now we can click on save. And our template was saved successfully over here. Now let's go into the post general journal entries application. And now we can click here on select templates. So click on this one and here you can already see our template ZTest2. Let's select this template. And now you can see that the screen changed a bit and only the information that we defined in our manage journal entry templates app are being displayed. So here the header information, for instance, as you can see the period and ledger group are read only. And on the line item level, you can see that there are not many information left to be filled. Yeah, and that's basically it. By now you know how to post general journal entries in the SAP S4HANA system using Fiori and how to select templates to restrict the data entries and also pre-fill lots of information. Thanks a lot for watching this video till the end. If you liked it, then please subscribe to the channel and activate the bell. See you next time.